The X-Files Season 4 Review. Hello and welcome to another video. Now I've done a couple of full length season reviews of The X-Files before, seasons 1 and 2, and I, for season 3 I did something a little bit different, I, think that I just chose my top 10 episodes from the season. Uh, this time around I'm going to go back to doing the full season. Now season 4 of The X-Files ran for 24 episodes from October 1996 to May 1997 and again starred David Duchovny and Julian Anderson in their iconic roles as special agents Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. The first episode of the season is Heronvolk which picks up from the season 3 cliffhanger to Lither Kumai which sees uh, alien clone Jeremiah Smith taking Mulder to a, a farm where he finds beehives and lots of clones that look exactly like Mulder's abducted sister. And in the meantime, they're both being hunted by the Terminator. Sorry, I mean the alien bounty hunter from season two, played by Brian Thompson, of course. Now, this is a pretty solid season premiere. Uh, I think I've said before innumerable times and doing these reviews that I'm not a big fan of the conspiracy arc these days. And I very much stand by that, not least because Chris Carter has a tendency to pull things and then take them back in later episodes to the point where it ends up being complete nonsense. That being said, this is a pretty solid episode. It's pretty exciting and atmospheric. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a decent and exciting season premiere. Even though almost none of the conspiracy episodes are my favourites these days. The next episode is Home, which sees the return of Glenn Morgan and James Wong briefly to the series. Uh, they were among the most the most highly rated writers from the first season or so. Uh, this one is one is basically the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and wrong meets wrong turn on on television, <laughs> in, with a bunch of inbred genetic mutants in a, in a small town, uh, famously uh, violent, uh, pretty much banned from being shown on network television since. Uh, needless to say, I think it's fabulous. <laughs> uh, one of the most uh, of course, iconic, very really graphic and disturbing scenes with the murder of his, of the, with the murder of the town sheriff and his wife by the inbreds, set to the strains of Johnny Mathis is wonderful. This is a wonderful episode. Pure, pure horror X Files, and and very good. I thoroughly enjoy it. And one of the best of the season. The next episode is Teleco, which is about some weird mutant who's killing African Americans uh, in order to steal their melanin or something. This is a bit of a of a crap episode, to be honest with you. It feels very much like a mishmash of previous episodes, like Too Shy, and with a bit of, even with a bit of Squeeze kind of thrown in there. Only nowhere near as good as any of them. This one, this one's a bit of a bore. Not a fan. The next episode is Unrua. And this is a much better episode, uh, as you probably may expect, given that it's written by the usually very reliable Vince Gilligan. Uh, this one sees uh, bizarre kidnappings, people ending up getting very crude lobotomies, and uh, some kind of thing going on with psychic photography, which leads Mulder and Scully to track down who the person doing these things is. This is a, this is a strange episode, atmospheric. I'm not sure the plot entirely works, but it, it's 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 a very strong episode nonetheless, with a great uh, guest turn from Pruitt Taylor Vince as the killer. The next episode is The Field Where I Died, which is about a cult and past lives, and it, this one is an absolute turkey in my opinion. Now I, I appreciate that Glenn Morgan and James Wong were trying to do different things, but yeah, uh, this this is just a weird episode, and it, it's just kind of boring. I I I I I don't think I've even seen this one in in twenty odd years. I think I I watched it once, maybe tried to rewatch it again, and it's just it's just really boring. It's really really boring episode. I'm sorry. The next episode is Sanguinarian, which is by Valerie Mayhew and Vivian Mayhew. I think that's the only episode they, they did, which is kind of a shame, because this is another of my favourites of the season. Uh, it takes place on, on, in, a, in a plastic surgery unit in a hospital, 
where the doctors are starting to go very strange and do truly horrifying things to their patients in surgery and there may be some kind of supernatural force at work. This is a fabulous episode. It's as gory as all hell. Thoroughly, thoroughly squirmy body horror with a great villain. Um, I love Sanguinarium. Uh, what else to say about it? The title sums it up. It, it's really, really gross. <laughs> Uh, the next episode is Musings of a C Cigarette Smoking Man, which is another uh, Morgan and Wong episode. And it's kind of a backstory for Cigarette Smoking Man that may or may not be true. Probably isn't. I know this one is a fan favourite. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. I, I do like, like the last third of it, when it's actually on kind of more or less the present or, or just prior to, you know just prior to the X-Files series opening and that modern his modern history and, and deep throats in it that stuff is fun and kind of archly satirical the other the other stuff though with the the JFK assassination and all of that stuff it just comes across as kind of rehashing stuff we've seen in other shows or movies and it's not really terribly interesting in my opinion I, I again i just find it a bit boring that sorry uh next up is a two-parter tunguska and terma this is one of the absolute worst two-parters at least to this point it, uh basically the, the most we kind of get out of what is a very convoluted barely comprehensible mess is that the Russians the Russians have started trying to develop a vaccine against the black oil that we have seen before that's pretty much the only pertinent information that we really get this I, I really uh, at this point the conspiracy episodes are just kind of I don't care and and this this pair is just really really dull the next episode is Paper Hearts, in which a, a a child serial killer pedophile that Mulder caught in the past uh, is, you know, ma making out like he's willing to get re reveal where some of his other victims were buried and all that stuff. But it soon transpires that he has other motives, and he he starts kind of seeding the idea that. Mulder's sister may actually have been one of his victims. Now this is a good episode. It's got a good turn from uh, Tom Noonan as, as the the killer, and it's an effectively moody episode. On the other hand, it, I, I can't really say it's a favourite simply because it's it's just it's kind of depressing. <laughs> you know? It's good stuff, but it 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 the the subject matter is just you know it, it's kind of grim and depressing. Not exactly a good time, you know. The next one is El Mundo Gira, which I don't know. This is a really bad episode. It's got something to do with El Chuca, Chupacabra, except it isn't. It's more like some fungus that's, I don't know, making these, these migrant workers deformed or something. Again, this is one I have not seen for a very long time just because it's so bad. It's so bad and so bad confused and, and 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 just really really boring the next episode is leonard betts which is another of my absolute favorites from this season uh a paramedic is killed in a in, a, in an a, in an auto accident and his headless body apparently walks out of the morgue after bashing the <laughs> the morgue attendant there are some very strange things going on this is a this is a cracking episode it's got a wonderfully ghoulish imagination and a wonderfully ghoulish sense of humor without actually being a comedy i really like this one this is a wonderfully malevolent episode lots of fun again one of, one of the season highlights to me and it also kicks off and I, I i would say unfortunately it also kind of kicks off the the scully cancer arc i have to be honest i'm, I'm not a big fan of this because it's it's depressing again i get you know i get uh, you know at the time you know it was dramatic and all that but uh, it's, it's just kind of depressing 
that's just my opinion anyway next up is never again in which, which this is the last Glenn Morgan and James Wong episode that they uh, that they did until the revival um, I'm not entirely disappointed to see them go again to be honest I really loved home but their other three were just kind of maybe weak including this one not as good as the stuff that they did in the first two seasons in my opinion this one's about uh, Scully gets involved with this bloke who's got a weird tattoo that may be, may be alive or it may just be making him have hallucinations and it, it's not very interesting. Uh, the most interesting thing about it is Jodie Foster who seems to be having a good time cackling away as, as the voice of this malevolent tattoo. It, it's, it's, it's not very interesting to be honest. Uh, the next episode is Memento Mori, which uh, really kind of kicks in the, with the, the Scully cancer arc and connects it to the conspiracy and, and all of this. Again, this, this is an okay episode on its own terms. It's got some exciting scenes like the, uh, the kind of the raid on the, on the medical plant with, with Mulder and the lone gunman. Again, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm not really big on the whole arc and, and the cancer stuff is depressing to me it's okay the next episode is Kaddish which is back to uh, monster of the week stuff this time it's uh, kind of Jewish mythology with, uh, there's a golem at work this is a bit dreary it's not bad but it's a bit dreary and it's not exactly high octane it, it's just a bit kind of meh the next episode is Unrequited, which sees Mulder and Scully trying to track down uh, an assassin who's targeting high-ranking military officials and who seems to have one very big advantage in that he can apparently turn himself invisible. Now, I like this episode. I don't, I don't think this one is a particular fan favourite, but I find this, this quite a fast-paced, fun episode. Plenty going on. It, it, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I, it, I wouldn't say it was one of my absolute favourites of the season, but it, it's, it's pretty solid stuff. I, I always rewatch it. I don't skip it. It's like good fun. Uh, next up, we have another two-parter: Tempest, Fugit, and Max. This is a, this is a bit of a weird one in that it's 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 a UFO two-parter, but it's not really a conspiracy two-parter. Um, I can't say I'm a particular fan. It's less kind of because it's not really a conspiracy two-parter. It's less kind of convoluted and full of itself than the uh, the other one that we got this season at the same time it's just it's not that exciting it's a bit the fact that it is so divorced makes it feel a bit pointless and they also kill off agent pendrel for no apparent reason uh, like okay well I'm, I'm glad we I'm glad we built that character up just to get rid of him before he'd really done anything okay uh, <laughs> why just for like a lame shock it just seems seems a bit pointless to me did the actor piss them off or something um the next episode is synchrony which sees Mulder and scully getting involved in a murder that may be committed by a man from the future i, I kind of like this episode it's, it's a good time travel episode a good paradox kind of episode it's, you might say it's a little bit kind of out of the usual realm of the X-Files, but I kind of like it. It's original. It's different. It's, it's pretty solid. Uh, the next episode is Small Potatoes, which is a very good episode from Vince Gilligan. This is basically the first time that they, that they had the stones to try and do a, 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 a comedy episode without Darren Morgan, because <laughs> Darren Morgan pretty much created the comedic X-File episode at the end of season two with the... Uh, with Humbug and then he basically did them in season three and then he left and this is the first time they kind of had the stones to let someone else have a go and you may as well get somebody like Vince Gilligan because this is a very funny episode uh, basically a guy basically a guy who's uh, got some kind of genetic abnormality that basically allows him to change his appearance and become anyone and he's basically been using this to you know bang chicks that wouldn't go, would go anywhere near him if they knew who he really was. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a funny episode. 
I'm not sure it's quite as good as the as the Morgan ones, but it, it's still one of the better episodes of the season. The next episode is Zero Sum, which is another, it's a conspiracy episode. Skinner's been trying to make his own deal with Cancer Man and the, to try and save Scully, and he started doing dodgy things on his behalf without getting much in in return. And we've got the Killer Bees back from Heron Vault. I, I, I kind of like this episode, even you know, I like, I, like I said, I'm not really into the conspiracy ones, but this is a solid. This is a solid thriller episode. It's a good showcase for Skinner, and it's got some really scary scenes with the uh, with the killer bees. That's that's what I want. The next episode is Elegy, which is about a series of murders and the ghosts of the people who have been murdered start appearing to people as, like just before they're found dead or whatever. Uh, it's, this, this is a pretty good episode. I like this one. It is. It has. It is a bit kind of grim, I guess. A bit kind of, but I don't mind it. It's kind of a spooky grim rather than just a depressing grim. I quite like this one. It's it's a good kind of ghost story and murder mystery. And it and that and yeah, this the, that scene where Scully actually sees a ghost is, is actually really really fucking scary and and effective. I like Allergy. It's it's a it's an interesting episode. The penultimate episode of the season is Demons, where Mulder gets amnesia and becomes a prime suspect in a murder, and it's got something to do with his childhood. I'm not a fan of this episode. I found this incredibly fucking boring on on first viewing, and I've never been able to sit through the whole thing since. It it just doesn't work, not least because all the stuff that we're supposed to find interesting. We've pretty much been told it all before, so you don't really find it. You know, it, it's not a big shock at this point that Cancer Man was involved with 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 Scully's parents. I mean, with Mulder's parents. We know this. We've had this established. So, and we don't really find out anything that we didn't know before. So it, it's kind of like, wh what's this about? I find this episode just really, really boring. Not a favourite. Uh, and then we're on to the season finale, which is Gethsemane, which uh, sees a discovery in the frozen wastes of Canada that may actually be a, a, the, the body of an alien, an extraterrestrial, um, but El all is not as it seems, and in fact the whole alien thing may be a big con or, or, or something. Um, this is a decent enough finale, and I mean, it's a it was a huge cliffhanger at the time. I'm not sure it really stands up all that well, or along with the the kind of the concluding two parter in season five. Because this is what I, this is what I'm talking about. This whole arc is ultimately just a complete blind alley. The whole arc that we get, where it's like, oh no, you know, actually. Actually, there are no aliens. The whole thing is just a big giant cover up by the government to cover up other things, and, it, and it, it's all just a big hoax. Except that it isn't. And we've, we, we and Mulder have already seen more than enough to know that it's not a big hoax. We've seen freaking shapeshifters and freaking oil that can jump from body to body. Are we really supposed to believe that the government had the ability to do things like that in like in the 90s? Come on. So this whole arc is just a load of bollocks. It's just, it's just Carter pushing the envelope back so we can waste a bit more time on this nonsense until we find out inevitably, oh no, this is actually not true and there are still aliens. Ah! Like I said, as an episode on its own, it's not bad and at the time it was a big cliffhanger, but this is just one of those that just does not stand up to the test of time, in, in my opinion. And that's basically the season. I'm not a massive fan of season four. There are some really good episodes. I would say Home, Unrua, Sanguinarium, Leonard Betts, uh, Small Potatoes, probably the best of the season, with a shout out to LG Zero Sum, Synchrony, and, and maybe uh, Unrequited. There's also a fair smacking of kind of dull episodes that don't really do anything for me. It's not a bad season by any means, but it's not 
and one of my absolute favourites, I would have to say. Uh, overall, I'd probably give season four a B.